For industry 4.0, there are different technological considerations that are required. One thing that is often not looked upon seriously, but is very important from our viewpoint for industry 4.0 compliance is to take help of the knowledge base. Knowledge base from the same industry, from previous production processes, existing pro production processes in other units or from the knowledge base that can be obtained from other industries following similar kind of production processes. So, this knowledge base will be very helpful. So, that is why we need some kind of a platform that can help build a knowledge sharing mechanism. So, these collaborative platforms are very important in this context collaboration platform, collaborative platform or collaboration platform. Collaboration platforms are very important and also in this lecture we will talk about product life cycle management. How you can achieve automation in PLM products life cycle management for trying to step forward to meet the industry 4.0 objectives. So, let us look at some of these features the high level understanding about each of these in the next little while. So, what is a collaboration platform? So, basically we are talking about a platform which can be a software platform, which can be a software hardware platform, which helps the in employees to share information and solve certain business problems. So, employees can share information between themselves using a collaboration platform. The employees of one industry can share the information with employees of another industry by virtue of use of these collaboration platforms and so on and this thing you can generalize and extend to different different scenarios likewise. So, collaboration platforms essentially are talking about building platforms that will include in the sharing of knowledge a platform for managing the knowledge knowledge management and including it in the business operation for renovation of the business processes and improving upon the efficiency of these business processes in the future. So, this is what a collaboration platform will help in doing. So, what is a collaboration platform? So, there are some different perspectives to build collaboration platforms. There is a social layer component that is introduced in the business social layer because we are talking about employees, we are talking about users who will share their different knowledges with the help of these platforms. So, social layer component is combined is integrated with the provisioning with the provision of business utilizations. But then you need some kind of a platform, so you need some kind of a tool which can be integrated with the existing products or the new products that are being developed or are being acquired and implanted in the industry. So, there are some common attributes in business collaboration platforms. These collaboration platforms should be easily accessible and they should be easy to use and they require some familiar function which help in the collaboration between the team members or across different teams. One such platform is named uh, known as pro work flow that is the name of a collaboration platform that is often used in the industries. So, this is a web based project management platform that is designed for managers and they, this platform basically helps employees to collaborate and improve upon the project delivery in the production process in the project management process rather. So, this is an example of a collaboration platform. So, let me now show you how this collaboration platform is going to work. So, we are in a collaboration platform we are talking about. So, we are talking about a collaboration platform. This collaboration platform will help in collecting knowledge. Collecting knowledge. So, 
this knowledge will be used in knowledge management. So, basically what is happening essentially is this collaboration platform is helping or enabling knowledge management, it is enabling knowledge management. So, this knowledge management is important for different industry agents. There could be other industry agents likewise and industry agent N. So, these industry agents would be sharing information between themselves and they would be working together together for achieving the objectives of the business. So, this is how a collaboration platform works and how it is linked to the knowledge management aspect of it. So, essentially what is happening the idea is towards the objective of improving the productivity, improving the efficiency of these business manufacturing processes and so on for fulfilling the overall objectives of industry 4.0, we are saying that these collaboration platforms would be found to be useful. So, collaboration productivity is going to be in, is going to be improved, is going to be increased. So, there are four different aspects of increase in the collaboration productivity and this will be enabled with the help of different key parts such as IT single source of truth, industrialization and coordination. So, let us look at each of these individually in little bit more detail in the next few, few minutes. IT, pro, IT proliferation. So, basically what has happened is as we know that computers, computational devices etcetera has had a huge impact in our economic growth in the last few decades. And there has been increase in the capital stocks and shares across different companies worldwide. So, these industries worldwide are required to consider and promote global information technology, global information systems with the help of this computing power. So, storage capacities have increased, computational high speed computational cap capacities have increased and they are increasing even more day, day by day. So, this IT proliferation has basically helped in building the computational platform that will be required for coming up with the collaboration platform. Single source of truth, single source of truth means we are talking about a single repository where all the data are going to be stored. So, essentially we are talking about a data model an information model that will help in storing every data element exactly once. So, this is this single part of the single source of, source of truth that we are talking about. So, this single source of truth must employ the right software at the right time at the right place for right decision making. So, single source of truth is needed to be realized across the whole product life cycle and this is very important. Industrialization. So, it is basically the bridging between the virtual world and the physical environment. So, the physical environment is linked with the virtual world using cyber physical systems which we talked about earlier and the cyber physical systems are equipped with computers, sensors, actuators and so on. So, these systems will require intuitive and self effective elements to be adopted in them. So, this is the industrialization aspect of it and coordination is basically to ensure that there is stronger coordination between mul multiple industry agents in the same industry across different industries and so on. So, that the collaboration productivity can be increased even further. So, this can be initiated in two steps coordination can be initiated in two steps. In the first step we can establish a network which communicates with the overall target and in the second 
providing authority to decision makers in a decentralized system. So, this network we are talking about in the context of coordination is maintained by encouraging the exchange of employees or by using smart devices between different employees because exchange physical exchange may not be required you know if you you know if you equip equip your employees with different smart devices this exchange of information can be maintained for stronger coordination between the employees of the same organization or across different organizations and so on. Now, let us try to understand the product life cycle management aspect of it. So, product life cycle management as this name suggests this term suggests it is actually a widely used terminology in the industry. So, it talks about it talks about the life cycle of a product from ideation till deployment the entire life cycle of a product is captured using these product life cycles. So, this product life cycle management works as a management system for a company's products. PLM handles a product completely from single part of the product to the entire portfolio of that product. Examples of product life cycle management systems are basically the CIS system, computational intelligence system and there are many many different other industry specific PLM systems that are widely used in the industries. Uh, and uh, there are uh, so basically these PLM systems are quite popular. So, the main goal of product life cycle management is to maximize the product revenues to decrease the product associated costs and to increase the products value. So, obviously, as you can understand these are very attractive features which will re be required to be implemented in order to move towards industry 4.0, improving efficiency in industry 4.0, improving automation objectives in industry 4.0 and so on. So, PLM, so what is this P? P means product. So, the product is basi basically the central theme in the industry, everything is governed around products and processes. So, P corresponds to product which is basically the central agent of consideration in PLM in the industries. So, the product is the origin of company earnings. So, this P is obviously as I was telling you so far the most important component of product life cycle management. And we can understand that if you do not have product you do not have its services. So, every service is basically linked to the product. The L of product life cycle management stands for life cycle, L stands for life cycle and there are 5 different parts, 5 different phases in this product life cycle uh, sorry in the life cycle of PLM. So, one is basically visualization, visualize, explain, perceive, use and then dispose. So, visualize means ideation, ideation explaining the idea perceiving the idea, realizing the idea, supporting the system, the product that is built and then disposing or retiring the product that is built. So, these are the 5 different parts, 5 different phases in the product life cycle uh, of any product life cycle. Visualization as I was telling you corresponds to the ideation. People have different ideas regarding a product, so they visualize this product to be built that is the ideation part. Next is the explanation, this idea has to be transformed into some kind of a representation that is basically captured through the phase explanation phase. Perceiveness or perception is basically at the end of the previous phase, uh, the product has to be built in its final form. And then use or support is basically the customer basically starts to use the product in the use or support phase and then once it is used, once it is no longer useful to the company the product has to be retired. So, why we are talking about all of these things? We need to understand the different phase, the different phases of the life cycle of any product. M in PLM means management. So, product life cycle management M stands for management. Management, we are talking about product management over here, 
where the at you know the, the considerations of coordination and institution of product related devices are important. It is required to fix different objectives and enforcing the capabilities of decision making and taking result of the control. These are the different important considerations in the management aspect of PLM. So, the whole idea in the management aspect of PLM is to ensure that a product works well, it is managed across its life cycle and the management guarantees that the product will earn the profit for the company. So, in terms of industry 4.0, it is required to improve efficiency, e effectiveness, automation has to be poured in in order to be able to achieve it. So, automation in the PLM is something that the industries will have to be striving for with the help of different different things such as you know computers alone, embedded systems, cyber physical systems, everything has to be taken together in order to improve upon this efficiency and effectiveness in the automation of PLM. So, this efficiency and effect effectiveness of PLM in improves the market share and market size with increasing revenue. So, these are some of these business objectives of PLM for industry 4.0, financial performance which obviously talks about increasing the market share, increasing the market revenue, reducing the development cost etcetera, time reduction basically reducing the project time overrun, decreasing the profitable time etcetera. Improving quality talks about decreasing the defect rate that means, the rate at in which rate at which the manufacturing defects in these different products are going to be there. So, decreasing that rate, improving the customer satisfaction and so on, these are basically improving quality aspect of the business objectives of PLM and overall improvement of the business, decreasing the delay time in product release, ensuring 100 percent configuration conformity, improving 100 percent customer satisfaction, these are all the different business objectives of PLM for industry 4.0. So, if we are talking about PLM, we need to understand few things. So, let us look at let us look at some of these different aspects. So, let us talk about the scope, scope of PLM in the context of industry 4.0. So, first of all you need to design, you need to design the product, then this product has to be built in its final form, converse, conversion, conversion of the design into the physical form of the product and then this product will be delivered. So, delivery of the product. So, all of these basically will have to be automated to the extent possible in order to comply with the industry 4.0, 4.0 objectives. So, going back what is the scope of PLM? So, there are 9 components in PLM to handle a product across its life cycle and these are the different components of it, these are the different components, objectives and metrics, organization and management, activities, people, product data, product data management system, different PLM applications, equipments and facilities, techniques and methods. So, all of these different 9 components will have to be handled in a in the life cycle of a product in PLM. So, objectives and metrics. The objective of a company for PLM is to improve the quality and business, reduce the time, improve the financial performance. So, KPIs commonly known as KPIs key performance indicators are considered in the companies. These are basically some kind of a matrix that are considered in the company and these are targeted by the employees to be achieved towards the development of a particular product. The next thing is basically the organization and management. Here we are talking about resource management aspects and the overall management of the different resources, 
resource management means all kinds of resources, all kinds of resources including the product, the infrastructure, the human resources and all kinds of resources the management aspect of it should also be consideration alongside. Activities, there are many products, product associated activities such as idea management, program management, new product development and so on. People aspects, many people are involved to, to progress and maintain a product, example a business analyst, a cost accountant. So, these are the different people aspects and the product data, it is a major asset throughout the product life cycle. So, product will face problem if we provide false product data. So, product data means like you know you falsify some kind of a data, you say that the product is defect free, but let us say that there is some small or big defect that exists in the product. So, this, this falsification should not be done. So, then the product itself will fail and it will face problem in the market. Product data management system as this name suggests it manages all the generated data and that is used for improving the life cycle product life cycle overall. So, it provides correct information at the right time. PLM applications to get desired performance levels different applications are required which are responsible for enabling the people to take different decisions. These applications support the people to build and maintain these different products. Equipment and facilities talking about the use of different equipments, the use of different facilities, the use of different infrastructure that are already existing in the, in the industry and procuring the ones that are not already there in every phase of the PLM. Techniques and methods to refine the production across the life cycle by means of product progress time, product cost, many methods and techniques can be used such as activity based costing, concurrent engineering, design for sustainability and life cycle assessment. Business drivers, there are many new business challenges. If you have to adopt PLM for complying towards the objective of industry 4.0, there are different business challenges such as reduced or shortened product life cycle, increased outsourcing in the new products in the context of industry 4.0 and the products structure has become complex. So, think about IIoT systems, think about the CPS systems in industry 4.0. We are talking about small small sensor enabled devices, small small actuator enabled devices. So, these you know these do not you know so the way these IoT systems are developed the way the IoT systems are developed, it is a kind of different product life cycle that is used for these IoT systems. So, the essentially what has happened is in IoT the product life cycle has reduced, it has shortened and lot of things are basically lot of components are outsourced and many of them are insourced from different companies and so on. So, basically this outsourcing and in insourcing in the context of IoT and their use in industry 4.0 has increased. And consequently, the structure of the product, the building of the product because there are so many different different complex components in these different products, IoT products that the product structure has also become complex. So, these are some of these new business challenges for PLM in industry 4.0 that will have to be kept in mind. Increase in speed, increase in demand and quality of product are the other challenges to drive a particular business industrial requirement. So, nowadays we are not talking about physical presence of the different units, there could be virtual presence also, there could be geographically dispersed design teams, supply chain itself has been made virtual to a large extent and this could be further increased with the, in, with the, with the increase of adoption of these IoT systems. So, what is required is that the different industry components will have to collaborate with one another. So, net centric technologies have increased in their use in PLM nowadays and th that has also not only improved, not only increased the efficiency of the production process, but has also made it much more complex in terms of development. So, for industry 4.0, these are the 10 step approaches that can be used for PLM. 
So, these are the different 10 steps. Number 1 data gathering, education of PLM. So, education component is very important and is often neglected, but education and training is very important. Practice of management in PLM, PLM concept, PLM roadmap generation, development strategy, rate of interest calculation, management report preparation, executive preparation and executive decision support. If you need to know in further more detail about each of these, many of these are quite well understood and you know I think most of them you can understand from these names alone, but if you need to understand in further more detail, this is the source that can help you to understand in further more detail. So, you can go through this particular literature in order to understand these. So, with this we come to an end of this lecture. So, collaboration platform, product life cycle management, their automation improvement in the context of IOT, IIOT industry 4.0 is very important. So, you know these often are often these often are quite overlooked, but should not be from our perspective and that is why we have included these things in this particular course uh, on uh, industry 4.0 and IIOT. Thank you.